ครับCome down to Miami, and hopefully we'll see some great results in Homestead, Matt. Um, we, we prepared for it for sure, but uh, it's, it's certainly a pleasure to be here too. I woke up this morning, and it was about 28 degrees in Detroit. So, and there was a deer in my yard, which um, they eat everything. Uh, but it was beautiful when we got off the plane, and it was about 75 here. So, uh, just just wonderful to be here. We rolled the uh, the video because after Matt set the, the motorsports stone here and representing the great facility of Homestead Miami Speedway, I just felt compelled to share with you some of the detail of what's really been an amazing motorsports year for General Motors and both Chevrolet and Cadillac. We want to make sure that everybody really knows about it too because it's the very essence of why we do what we do for a living and particularly why I'm in the business. So. Um, this is pretty much everything that I love, and uh, the car business is, is where I want to do it. In NASCAR, Chevrolet has clinched the Sprint Cup Manufacturers Championship, and I'd like nothing more to crown the season with a win here at the Ford EcoBoost 400 <laughs> at Homestead in 10 days. That's hard to come out of my mouth. It kind of hurt. Uh, I'm shameless promoting for you there, Matt, too, so um, it's a great race, and, and wow, what a, what a great thing for the community with all the money that comes in here every year. In IndyCar, uh, Chevrolet celebrated its return by winning the Manufacturers Championship, taking 15, 11 of the 15 races, and powered the series champion, Ryan Hunter Ray, who you saw in the video, and the runner-up, Will Power, and six out of the top 10 drivers in the standings, and this was our first year back with a full fully designed engine between Chevrolet and Ilmore Engineering. It's a direct injected V6, very similar to the technology we use in our cars. And this engine um, came back into the series for the first time against Honda, who had been there for many years, and took that championship series and took the driver's series away from them. So, um, brought a tear to my eye, but um, that's, that's what we did. So, uh, a fantastic <laughs> year for us. And the Pirelli World Challenge DT Series as well as the American Le Mans Series GT, GM, uh, both Cadillac and Chevrolet uh, got both the Manufacturers Championships and the Drivers Championships um, with the Cadillac and Corvette teams respectively. So um, those were big, big uh, world stage performance um, activities as well. Uh, a lot of fun. So it was a great year on the track for Cadillac and Chevrolet in uh, 2012, and it was a very good year so far um, on the road for us as well. So. Before I go on, I'd like to say that I was proud uh, as an American to see this country go out and do what it does best yesterday, which is to vote. And so the turnout was um, amazing, and congrats to our new president and repeat president, Mr. Barack Obama. Woo! I saw the blue here too, so I know that people here um, uh, voted, voted Democratic here too, so congratulations on that. But I think I also speak for everybody in our company that um, I'm glad it's over with. Um, I am glad it's over with. It was a shame that we were treated as a political pinata and we've been having that experience for the last two or three years. It's very hard to do business in a normal way when you have everybody commentating on the political government motors, the election, what's going to happen, who likes who, um, the Obama mobile, it goes on and on and on, and it couldn't be further from the truth. So um, we're looking forward to working with uh, the White House, the Treasury, the federal government to do what is best for our company, for our industry, and for our nation. And if you want to know what I think is best for our nation, I'd say a strong, thriving domestic auto industry for starters. That is necessary. Eight million jobs in this country. Eight million. 
are dependent on our related jobs related to the auto industry. That's one out of every 17 private sector jobs. So if you don't think there's a flow-down effect here, there is, and it's very important. The majority of those are tied to the domestic auto industry, and I'm proud that mine is one of them. Two different presidents from two different political parties with vastly different views of the world saved our auto industry, and by extension, this nation's manufacturing base. Imagine what would have happened. And in doing so, they likely prevented an even greater economic collapse than we saw or experienced. For those, and if we lose our manufacturing base and those jobs in this country, witness the steel industry, we will really be in a lot of trouble. This nation has got to continue to make things. We cannot, as a nation, subsist on mowing each other's lawns, cutting each other's hairs, or in Florida, carrying each other's golf bags. At some point, the mowers and the clippers break and have to be relate and have to be replaced. What will we do? We have got to make things. We need manufacturing in this country. And the domestic auto industry is expanding, adding American jobs and investing right here at home. And we're on the rebound as a result. Ford is profitable, Chrysler is again profitable, and GM announced quarterly earnings of $1.5 billion for the third quarter, much of that generated on the earnings of $1.8 billion right here in North America. That's a lot of jobs, a lot of factories, and a lot of cars again for the United States. Last week we announced our best October sales in the U.S. since 2007, with deliveries up 5% a year over a year ago to 195 plus thousand vehicles in one month. This is with four less brands. So if you think about it, we had eight brands in a much higher industry in 2007. We're now eclipsing that with four less brands at a higher rate. And our retail customer, our customer sales were up 7% on top of that. Combined sales of many small and compact cars were up 72% compared with the year ago, 72%. We are now becoming a car and truck company again, not just a trunk company. Strong Spark and Sonic sales and a 34% in cruise sales drove this. So we now have small cars again that are very desirable. Chevrolet dealers also delivered a record 2961 or 2961 volts. That has been the political punching bag over the last two years. We now have 50% of the electric plug-in segment. You can lease a car for less than it costs you to fill up on gasoline every month. I do it. I've got about 14,000 miles on my Volt. I put about 10 gallons of fuel in it over about two years. Think about that. That's remarkable. And so people are now telling each other about this car. It's very, very fun to watch. And don't watch Fox News. No. If you watch Fox News, just don't believe everything you hear on TV about this car, about the sales of it, or about the economy around it. Against this backdrop, it's no coincidence that the economy, too, is starting to show signs of life. Imagine that. As it improves and our business grows, we need to do better in places where we're underperforming like right here in Miami. I was happy to see the Volt sales here. The Volt sales here begin to pick up, pick up big time here in Miami. But how many of you drive an American car? Not so many. How many of you drive a GM car? We have a lot of work to do here. But thank you for that. And I know that. Miami is the seventh largest metro area in the country at about five and a half million people. And there's a lot of wealth there too, if you haven't noticed. This is a tremendous opportunity for us, and we intend to capitalize on it, but we've got to have the best product. We have to improve our consideration of that product. We have to get people to drive our new cars and trucks and see what we have and give them a chance. It will be a challenge, we know that. We made some pretty poor product for decades. We earned the reputation that we got, and we bankrupted the company doing it. It will be a huge challenge for us. But this market is really heavily import-oriented. Honda, Toyota, and Hyundai combined sell 40% of all the greater of, of the cars here in Greater Miami. Maybe you better check your fuel economy and make sure this 
what you said, <laughs> what you thought it was going to be. <laughs> but we have an opportunity. BMW, Mercedes, and Lexus all sell more cars here than Chevrolet. Think about that for a minute. That's the demographic of right here in Greater Miami. Those three sell more than all of Chevrolet. I take that personally, and so does everybody in our company. To meet the challenge, we plan to do two things. First, we are going to continue to improve what we think is probably the best lineup that we're going to launch of vehicles GM has ever had across all of our four domestic brands. And second, we're going to offer the best customer experience on the planet. Pretty simple. No silver bullets. First, the vehicles. By the end of 2013, we will have turned over about 70% of our entire product roster in North America the biggest launch and the biggest turnover of product in history. That includes 13 new Chevrolets in 2013, with everything from an all new Chevy Silverado pickup to a completely redesigned Generation 7 Corvette. This is America's favorite sports car celebrating its 60th anniversary. It includes our two new Cadillacs, the ATS, compact luxury sedan, which is now taking on the BMW 3 Series. Head on and the XTS large sedan, which we're beginning delivery right now, which is a seven series type size of Cadillac. Next year, we'll begin production of the Cadillac ELR, which is an extended range electric luxury coupe. This is built off of the E-Rev platform of Volt, only it's taken it to the next generation with a lot different styling and a lot different driving dynamics. GMC will launch a new Sierra pickup and the Yukon and Yukon XL SUV, the bread and butter of that great brand. And Buick will continue its ascension to the American luxury scene with the new versions of LaCrosse and Regal, along with the new Encore small SUV, something that we haven't had in the GM lineup here for um, forever. The success of Buick here in Miami in this market might surprise you. Buick sales are up this year 11% year over year, and they're moving at five times the rate of just five years ago. This is a hugely growing market for us here. In fact, one of their best dealers is, of course, right here, Williamson Buick GMC, which in September sold the third highest volume of any Buick dealer in the entire country. So thank you. Of course, that is here today. As a matter of fact, is someone one of our other great Buick GMC dealers, Mario Mercado of Brickell Motors. Mario. And Louis Barra, one of our best Cadillac dealers here. So, uh, Louis, thank you. So, as I've indicated, the product pipeline is filling in every one of our brands. The plan is to accompany that with what I believe to be the most important philosophy a business could have excellence in customer satisfaction and the experience at a dealership. That's the road to success for everyone doing anything. Product excellence and service excellence. Do them both and you really can't get beaten. And by service, I mean much more than what goes on inside the garage, although that's very important as we all know. But it's more than that. It's also the perception that garage and that store creates in the customer mind on arrival. That's why we put so much time, money, and effort into approving and refurbishing our dealerships. And as I continue, you'll see some of the very telling before and after photos rolling on the screen to show you what I mean. I'm talking about the way we treat our customers, the way we respond to their needs and wants, the way we bend over backwards to make sure that they're happy, that they come back again and again, and they'll recommend us to their family and friends. We've done extensive customer research and found that customers, no matter what they're buying on big ticket items, a car, furniture, clothing, electronics, whatever, they have five basic characteristics and expectations of the company that they spend their money with. First, a great product is the price of entry. Everyone wants a great product experience, obviously. And customers had some key expectations for the purchase and service experience. They want to know that you know your stuff. You have to know the product and how to fix it if it needs to be fixed the first time right. They want individualized convenience, the most convenient option in the market. And the response needs to be personal, it needs to be timely, and it needs to be relevant. 
So for some, a request for a quote on a new car might require a phone call. For others, it's send me a text with everything that I need to know. They want sincere appreciation. At every point during that customer experience with your company, the customer wants to know that you appreciate the fact that they spent their money with you. That also means that they want personal follow-ups and issue resolution quickly. And finally, customers really value transparency. They want to know all the details and they don't want any secrets. They want sound price and value advice and they want full disclosure. We can and will do all of those things. We've made it our stated goal to lead the industry in customer satisfaction. I made that statement about a year and a half ago, and we're well on our way. That's what leads to loyalty, what leads to repeat business, and what leads to success. In fact, we have put all of our metrics aside and looked at retention and loyalty. If you're doing all of the things right with the product, the service, the dealership, all of those things are right, you'll get people coming back and buying your product again. We've made a lot of progress, just as we made progress improving our quality and reliability. The Consumer Reports Recommended Buy List just came out, and GM has 16 models on the list, up from 11 last year. And the same number we had in 2006, when we had twice as many brands and many, many more models. In the CR reliability rankings, Cadillac moved up 14 spots last year and is the highest ranked domestic brand, with the CTS Coupe named the most reliable domestic car. The CTS Coupe. In fact, all of our brands showed improvement. GMC moved up 10 spots. Chevy moved up two spots, and Buick was up three. Cadillac, GM, and Chevrolet were all above industry average and brand reliability scores. This is an impressive move for us. These and other surprising and often unreported facts run counter to current conventional wisdom about General Motors and our brands. We won't and don't want to dwell on the competition. We want people to realize how good our vehicles truly are and how well they stack up against the competition. Our quality numbers are up from where they were in the past. Our designs are more compelling, more dynamic. Our products are certainly more worthy of consideration versus the import competition. Now it's a matter of getting the message out in this market and across America and North America. I'm intensely and unapologetically proud of what we're doing at GM and also of what of the so-called big three are in fact doing these days. It's going to be a long road to change our perception, but I really believe that we can get this done and we are. You could help by not heading on autopilot down to the BMW, Audi, Mercedes, or Lexus showrooms the next time you're in market. Start looking at premium American vehicles again, whether it's ours, Fords, or Chrysler's, even though Chrysler is a bit of a semi-foreign company. <laughs> at least have a look. You will like what you see. I thank you in advance for your consideration. I thank you for your attention today. It humbles me to be able to speak to all of you here. I know this is a very important group here in Miami. Um, I love coming down here, and Ed, thank you for the invite. And Phyllis, um, your professionalism in, in conducting the meeting here is obvious, and so this is a great group, and I congratulate on this. Thank you for your attention. And again, give us a chance. We're on our way up. We've got some great things, and I think you'll love our cars, and I know you'll love our viewers. Thank you.